Hello. If we pass an user prompt to LLM, we expect to get a meaningful response, yes? There are few scenarios how to get that. So here is our user prompt. And we are making a request to LLM. So LLM receiving this prompt and give us back a response. Normally, the output is represented as a plain text in a dashboard. It is a good, but in this scenario, it is difficult to reuse in specific data calculation or transformations. So we have another choice. We can send a response to something different. In this way, we can use Python to work further with a given output because output is represented as a usable Python object which can be reused. However, you need to put a little of efforts to develop this logic. And here Pythonic is gonna help us. And Pythonic is supported by Langchain. So with this tutorial, we will cover specifically this scenario which is on the right. Let's check the steps we are going to do in this tutorial. In our action plan, the very first step we are going to do is define output data types. For this purpose, we will prepare OOP class and use Pydantic output parser inside. Then we need to think about our prompt. We just simply write a human prompt and then directly incorporate this into the chat prompt. The next component is request. This is a main message that we will send to our LLM model. It uses parameters we set up previously in Pythonic output parser class and in chat prompt which use human prompt for additional information for LLM. And the request can be look like give me something interesting about politics. The next step is to set up our LLM model with Langchain which takes our request and returns meaningful results. In this tutorial, to set up our LLM model, we will use OpenAI API. Finally, the output of the LLM model is the result, required information in specified format by Pydantic Output Parser. So we need to parse the generated result by Pydantic Output Parser directly on the result generated by the model. By doing that, at the end we can get a response to our prompt in one or more data types, list, dictionary, string, or even more. Here I want to notice that you can set up your output to be one string and one dictionary variables, or maybe only in dictionary, or even one string and list of dictionary. That you will see in hands-on part. So overall we have these four steps. The first one, define output data types and prompts. Second one, specify your custom request. Third one, set up a LLM model. And the last one, take the output from that model by using Pydantic parser from Langchain. Just four steps. Let's start it now. So let's start from libraries we will use in this tutorial. OS to grab the environment variable for API key needed to connect to OpenAI. OpenAI, this LLM what we exactly use in this tutorial. Chat OpenAI, chat LLM which use chat templates as in inputs. Chat prompt template, a prompt template for chat models. And human message prompt template, this is a message sent from the user. Additionally, we will use Pydantic Output Parser, which is responsible to parse an output of our workflow. From Pydantic, we also need base model to create a Pydantic object and field to specify data types for different parts of output. Next, we will take OpenAI API key from environment variables and use it by creating a model standing on OpenAI. Also, you can specify model parameters here. In this tutorial, we will use temperature only, that is equal to zero. Next, we will define output data types and initiate a parser. Let's create a Pythonic class we will define output data type with. Let's name it players, because we want to have some interesting data about NBA players in the output. The base model from Pythonic goes as a single argument to this class. And now is a very important part. We need to specify data types for our output. 
we want to get values in list format. For that, we use pedantic field. Here we want to specify very clear description what we expect to see. Let's copy and paste that for another part of output. We want to get city name, which is a string object. For Wallace, we specify that we expect to get Python list of dictionaries containing player name and nationality. This is instruction for the Pydantic model what we want to get from it. For city, give me the most popular country across the results. So that's the instruction to get the second component in our output. So we have Walrus, which is the Python list, and a city, which is a string. That's enough for this tutorial. Then we need to set up our parser. Parser will care that the output Walrus will be at that format we specified in the player class above. So for that we use pedantic output parser. For the parser, we need to specify pedantic object. And as may you guess, we tell the parser look into the player class. Keep in mind that a parser object has its format instructions, which we must follow. Let's print that and take a look. Let's save and run this file first time in this tutorial. It seems I forgot to add brackets in the print statement. Let's fix that quickly. Right here. Run it again. Here you go. This is the instruction we must satisfy by passing arguments to Pyrantic parser. It is the simple JSON schema, not so difficult. Here you can see parameters we specified in Pyrantic class player in the output schema, Wallace and city. So, let's work with this parser in the next step. Let's remove this print statement. We don't need it anymore. As you can see, much of work we did so far. And now we need to set up the request. The first step set up in the request is to define prompts. In our case, we will use human prompt and chat prompt. Let's start from human prompt. For human prompt, we need to use human message prompt template. And then we give the prompt to human prompt from template. Template is like instructions to the model what we want to get. So with the template, we are passing the request, new line, and then incorporating format instructions. The combination of request and format instruction is like human generated request that the LLM will handle afterwards. Now do the same with chat prompt. For chat prompt, we gonna use chat prompt template. And this prompt we gonna set up from messages. And the messages will be taken from human prompt we defined just before. Place it to the list right here. So as I mentioned at the instruction, chat prompt uses human prompt template to make request to LLM. Next, the most funny part, we need to set up a request. We want to make a request directly from the chat template we defined just above. Then we need to tell exactly what we need to generate the model for us. So the request itself could be Give me facts about 100 NBA players around the world. Just remind the output of this request will be Walrus, which is Python list of dictionaries, and City, which is string object indicating the most popular city across the results. The second parameter in setting the request is format instructions. Remember, we defined that in parse variable, which is pedantic output parser. From here, we need to get and use format instruction while making request. And finally, we want to pass the request as a message. So we add dot to message method to the request variable. Lastly, we need to set up how we want to take the results from LLM. Results will be generated by our LLM model. 
we want to pass our request here direct into this model. And let's set temperature to be equal to zero. Just a mind, you can set parameters such as temperature and hour while setting a request or by defining a model variable right here. Both ways are good and works. So, once we have results object, we can grab the results values from there. We needed the parser here. For this purpose, we use again parser and calling the parse method from that. Here's a very simple logic. We need to parse results, so let's put it here. And from the results, we are taking context. That's what we are caring about. The result values are expected to be as player class object. So this patent class is super important for our use case. And we can take the full control of what exactly output format we need from LLM. Let's print these results. Results type. And check how these look like. We want to see results value. What is the type of the results? And let's go. After that, we will show the results. Just reminding, we have set up the request to the LLM. So, let's run the script. It's running. And here you go, all the results values are right here. As you can see, the results is a long list consists of many dictionaries inside, containing data about NBA players. The dictionary key is name and nationality, and values are actual values, exactly what we defined in Pydantic class. Now, move forward and take the final results from result values. You will see the differences shortly. For this, we import pandas, because we want to create a pandas data frame for final results, which is the object of Pythantic class players. As you can see in the query, we asked for 100 players, so we expect around 100 data points in the final data frame. So, the result data frame is a pandas data frame built from dictionaries inside result values. So, let's print this data frame. First 10 data points are enough to check that. Also, let's check the shape of that data frame. Remember, the length of data frame should be around 100. Additionally, I want to see the city output, which is the, the most popular city across the results. In technical words, across result values. So, we need to know result values city. Quick remind, we have specified values that we want to see in the output right here in the Pythantic class named players, values and the city. This is where city output has been set up. And here where values are taken from. Very simple. So, we made a pandas data frame from the values and city from the second part of the output. Let's run the final script version right now. And that's it. Here's the data frame I wanted to see. As expected, two columns, one for name and one for nationality of each player. I asked for data of 100 players, so that's less or more what I wanted to see. And the most popular city across the results is United States. That is perfect, and this is true. So, I think we achieved the goal what we wanted to build in this tutorial. Pydantic class and Pydantic parser work perfectly in this particular use case. Two output parts. One is list of dictionary, which we converted to pandas data frame, and another single string variable that you can use whatever you want. Just removing non-required print statement and I think we run the script again and close the tutorial. Again, data frame and the most popular city across the results. 
Now, size of data frame is 110, output is dynamic, keep it in mind. That is for today.